Welcome. Thank you for being here. Uh, really excited about this evening. Uh, and with that, I'm going to hand it over to Tash, who will start it. Hang on just a minute, Tash. Okay. Can you send this to my page, please? Hello, greetings, everybody. Uh, good evening. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to acknowledge our traditional caretakers and ancestors of these lands. We are surrounded by 19 Pueblos. There used to be a lot more, but there's 19 Pueblos still surviving today. So we're very grateful for that. And uh, we want to acknowledge all of your ancestors in the lands where you are currently residing. And we all have ancestors. So we'd also like to acknowledge Mother Earth who's housing all of us while we're here for a very short time in the short run we call life. And we also would like to honor Father Sky who gives us all that we need nourishment from the universe. And uh, just to let you all know that Indigenous Ways is a nonprofit that is dedicated to bridging cultural exchange with people globally. And that means all people. We have no walls of separation. We have no discrimination. And we don't say we're right and you're wrong because you know what? We all have a different experience and a different path, but you know what? We are all one. And that's what our ancestors have also told us from the very get go. So just to let you know that our virtual events are recorded and archived on our website. So you can let your friends know if they wanna see it at a later point, they can. And then we have our concert series on Friday nights where we have comedy, we have uh, poetry, we have music, we have all kinds of fun stuff. And then on Wednesday nights, we bring in very, very, very special people like uh, yeah. tonight. Uh, we bring in people we honor and respect for their walk on this red road. And when I say this red road, I mean they're doing something to bridge differences, to bridge cultures, to bridge language, to bridge traditions, to bridge thoughts, perspectives, because the more we learn from each other, the more we become a better compassionate people as one. So all of these events are ASL interpreted. And tonight, I would like to give a very warm Welcome to Terry Vinson, always no, al also known as TV. That's her sign name. Terry Vinson has been uh, on this path to bridge hearing and deaf culture for over 30 years. She decided that since she was deaf, she wanted to be able to communicate with hearing people. So she learned to speak for herself, meaning voice for herself. But she also learned American Sign Language at a very, very young age at the New Mexico School for the Deaf. And she decided to make it her mission in life to teach hearing people. So I'm gonna let her talk about that. She's a very patient woman. She's a very compassionate woman who loves animals and always has animals that I've known of. And uh, Terry Vinson has taught many, many, many students. I'm one of them. Uh, and she has taught a lot of students that are now certified interpreters. And you know what? She's had a lot of patience with us because adult learners learn a lot slower than little tiny babies sign language, believe it or not. So without much ado, I'm going to give it up for Terry Vinson. Woohoo! Ah, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Yay. <laughs> Hello, hello, hi all. Uh, yes, deaf hearing people, welcome, welcome. Uh, I'm very excited and I'm looking forward to this. Uh, excuse me, right now it's a little bit windy out and so I'm looking out a little bit um, at the wind. Uh, so let me introduce myself. My name is Terry Vinson, and my sign name is TV. I grew up here in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and there's no sign name for New Mexico, only sign NM. So we just sign NM. So because people think, oh, there's a sign, you know, New Mexico or New Mexico, like the country, no. No, uh, we just have the sign for an 
M for New Mexico, just to let you know and sharing that. But anyway, I want to tell you um, that I want to share my experience with you growing up. So uh, my mother, my mother and her name is Elra and that's my mother. I was born and I grew up. And when I was two, my mom said, oh, there's something wrong. You know, she was talking with me and I was running around and uh, they said, there's definitely something wrong with her and they couldn't figure out what it was. Uh, sorry, sorry, it's very windy out here. I'm so sorry. Oh, okay, yeah, so uh, the papers are flying. But anyway, so my mom was looking at me and she decided uh, to go to Roswell, New Mexico, well, which is the south, with the southern part of New Mexico. So we went there and my grandparents owned a ranch there. And um, it's in a town that's called uh, Alina, New Mexico. And it's around 25 miles south. Uh, so Alina is up there and Roswell is below. So we went there and uh, my mother, uh, you know, told me to go and on her own, they closed the door uh, that I went into the doctor. The doctor had on, you know, the whole, um, you know, remember that, that disc that they used to wear, you know, and then they would look through and then they put it back on, on their forehead. That's what the doctor had. And so I'm looking at the doctor and the doctor is doing different things. And um, they bring in some honey, uh, some candy, some old fashioned candy, um, you know, with the, uh, with the different colors and uh, with orange and, uh, you know, with the wrapper and then you take it off. And then the doctor was standing behind me and he was, uh, you know, uh, banging on things and clapping his hands. And uh, I was just busy with the candy and the doctor said, yep, yeah, he's definitely no. So he, uh, he opened up the door and told my mother to come in. So my mother came in and he closed the door and he said, your daughter is deaf. And my mother was absolutely shocked and she couldn't believe it. And she was uh, very upset. And, you know, she said, well, what am I going to do with my daughter? How are we going to educate her? What are we going to do? And they said, well, there's a deaf school and it's in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And my mom said, really, really, there's a deaf school there. And the doctor uh, effort, uh, assured her that there was. Um, you know, they'll teach her how to read and write and how to interact with other children. And my mom was just, uh, so my, my parents brought me over uh, to the deaf school. And so I entered school and we were looking around and we saw so many deaf girls that were playing. And my mother told me to go ahead and play with the girls and to socialize with them. So my parents went in uh, to uh, discuss uh, about their daughter and how, how it was going to stay. So I was going to stay in the dorms. And while I was playing, my father, uh, my parents had a really hard time uh, leaving me there at the deaf school. And I told, and they said, no, we'll have a house mother and we'll, we'll take care of Terry for you. Don't worry about that. And so they pulled me over and they, I said, what? I'm playing, I'm playing. And they said, no, wait a second. And so I said, leave me alone. I'm, I'm at home. I want to play with my girls. And we played all day into the evening. And then it was time to eat dinner at the cafeteria and we ate. And then when we were done, we went back to the girls' dorm. And then it was time to go to bed. And I was looking around like, where's my bed? Where am I going to sleep? And I started crying. I started crying. I wanted my mom. I started crying. And my mom's name, uh, sorry, it was uh, uh, Miss Rivera. Uh, she was a, a big uh, stout uh, woman with a bun on her head. And she told me, it's okay, don't worry, come and sit with me. And all the girls were sleeping in the beds. They were all lined up along the wall. And I had my bed in, in the corner and I was crying for my mom. And 
Miss Rivera brought out some M&M chocolates for me. And I said, okay. And so she helped me and she rocked me and she took care of me while I was eating. And then all of a sudden I was out and she put me in my bed. When it was time to wake up in the morning, it was like, oh, where do I go? Where's the, where's the restroom? And, and, you know, I mean, where's the woman who gave me candy? And so I looked underneath my bed. Oh, and there was the M&Ms, the, the chocolate candies there. So anyway, so for that, so uh, the next day, my teacher, um, and the name is, uh, is uh, Miss Flower. And she was teaching me uh, to read and to write and learning. And uh, so we were teaching um, for the year and, um, and then all of a sudden it became summer vacation. So my parents came and picked me up and then they said, you know, Miss Flower, we wanna tell you something. And Miss Flower said, what? And they said, Miss Flower said, your daughter cannot talk, you know that? What do you mean my daughter can't talk, my mother said. And she said, yeah, you know, she's learning sign and she's good at reading and writing. And my mother said, hmm, okay. Well, they're labeling my daughter uh, that can't speak. Okay, well, that's fine. So my mother brought me home. And one day, uh, you know, we're playing with my friends at my home with my neighbors um, because I lived on a farm. And um, anyway, so I ran back home and I told my mom, mom, look, my friend's there. And she was, she told me to come over. And she said, what, what? And I couldn't understand. And she said, water, water. And I'm like, so I tried to speak it. And my mother said, okay, well, that's good. She poured in a glass of water and gave it to me. So I took the water and I sipped it. And then I gave it back to her, water. And she said, no, 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 no. And she said, say it again, say water, say water. I'm sorry, all the papers. So she said, water, water. And so I said it again, water. And my mother all of a sudden was so happy. And so I went running back to my friends and we played. And my mother thought, you know what? we're going to look for a magazine. And so my mother looked and she cut out all these different faces and hair colors and eyebrows and noses and bodies and arms and legs and everything. She cut off everything. And so she made a scrapbook and she put it um, and she glued it in uh, into this paper and she was busy working on this. So when I got up the next morning after playing, my mom said, no, you're not going out to play. You're coming to sit here with me. And I'm like, come on, mom, I wanna go out and play. So I sat down and she said, this is face. I want you to say the word face. And so I said, face. And she said, yes, 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 that's good. And so my mother taught me how to say words, um, you know, eyebrow and, uh, eyes and cheek and lips and arms and elbows. And I was learning and learning every morning. I was practicing my speak and I would learn my speech. And then I was speaking. You know, it's like a lip reading teacher, you know, where they use cued speech to put their hands on you. And then, um, you know, like uh, to feel the nasal, um, you know, for certain consonants and that type of thing. So anyway, so my mom said, okay, we're ready to teach, you know, so that way you know the words so we can put together a sentence. And so I had to lip read her and it was very difficult to understand. So I said, my mother said, how are you? How are you? And I said, yes, yes. So then I said, how are you? And using my voice and my mother taught me to say, I'm fine. So I said, I'm fine. We practice and practice and practice. One day I was playing with my friends at home and my parents went out and my mother, sorry, uh, we went out, my friends went out. And um, so she said, you're a cowgirl. And, and I told my mom, no, I'm not a cowgirl. I'm a cow horse. And my mother thought that was the funniest thing. She left, she laughed and she said, you're not a cow horse. 
you're a cowgirl. You are a cowgirl. And I said, yeah, I'm a cowgirl. And I was very excited. And my mom said that it was fall and it was time for me to go back to school. So I went back to the New Mexico School for the Deaf and I saw my teacher, Miss Flower. And so she was telling me to go along and I said, no, I want to talk to you. And so I was actually speaking with her and she said, no, 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 you're supposed to go. And I said, okay, fine. Um, so anyway, I went off and later I grabbed my teacher and I said, teacher. And she said, oh, hi. And she was signing to me. And I said, wait a second, wait a second. And I used my voice, hello, Miss Flower. And she looked at me absolutely in shock. And I said, how are you? And she looked at me again and she thought, well, this little girl. And then she said, I'm fine. And my mother said, see, I told you. My daughter was going to talk. You never ever tell my daughter that she won't be able to speak. And Miss Flower apologized and she said, I'm sorry, I won't, I won't label your daughter. <coughs> and my mother said, please don't ever do that to another deaf child again, ever, because that is wrong. And Miss Flower apologized and she said, I'm sorry, my mom left it after that. And afterwards, it was just a shock. Wait, my, uh, hold on one second. I need to get my, my papers again. Okay, so anyway, so uh, I grew up and I learned how to speak with my family at home and I used my voice. And my mother wanted me to go to speech therapy at the deaf school because they had speech therapy there at, at the school. So I went and I learned and then they signed up and they made me go to speech therapy. And I put up with it and I went any, anyway. And there was this one woman and wow, uh, she was big and stout and I was quite scared of her, but I went in and she put on lipstick and she would put on this lipstick and she would smack her lips together and I'm looking at her and she said, okay, I want you to say A-E-I-O-U and she had it listed. So I would use my voice. I had to learn the pronouns like E and she's like, no, no, no. And I was scared. I was quite frightened. And then she would say B, C, A with a big mouth. And you see E with the wave and, and everything going through the vibrations with my nose. And I put up. And so I learned uh, speech therapy. I learned how to speak with her. So I felt like it was a little bit of abusive, you know, because she told me that I was wrong. I was deaf. I didn't understand. You know, and hearing people, you know, can hear people, um, you know, even uh, speaking um, and when it's closed, you know, when it's covered, but we can't hear anything. And she was speaking and it was very tough. So growing up, I learned speech therapy. So the next day, well, I, then soon I was growing up with my family and we went on a holiday. It was uh, Easter and then Thanksgiving and, you know, just holidays. You know, I would go back home and I would use my voice and uh, because my parents didn't sign, I just suffered, suffered through it and I would speak with them. Um, I was hoping that my parents would learn sign language for me. And they're like, no, it's okay. And, you know, and I'm signing back and forth with my friends and I'm enjoying communicating with all the other children. And it was great. Later on, the communication, she would say, what, what did they say? What did they say? And I was constantly asking people. My family said, no, 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 don't, you know, don't do that. I said, but at home, they forgot, you know, and it was hard uh, for me to communicate. It was very frustrating. So 
I want to let you know that it was uh, what I cherish the most was the ASL and the deaf culture and the deaf history and the deaf community. Because to let you know that way deep down, I am deaf, 100% deaf. And it was a big challenge for me. You know that the deaf, they're not, um, they're not disabled. Deaf people are not disabled. They are able to do, to use a different language. And it's just a beautiful culture. The deaf were all the same. There's black, there's Indian, uh, there's uh, uh, Mexican, there's Asian, there's white, and we are all unified. We're all deaf and it feels good because we're all the same. And so we went home and my family was discriminating against Mexicans and blacks and, and Asians. And I'm like, what, all this discrimination, why? No, no, it doesn't matter with colored people. They're all wrong. And the reason why I said that is because we're all the same. We're all the same. We're all deaf. We're all the different colors. We're all the same. And my parents from then on were quiet. They were quiet. And so I knew with the language, you know, with deaf, with all of us deaf people, we were all the same. And, you know, deaf can do anything. It's the same as hearing. It's same same thing as hearing people do. Like, you know, we have successes. We have um, a different variables. I mean, they're in a variety of, of um, professions. They're doctors, they're lawyers, they're uh, engineers. Um, you know, I mean, uh, we have deaf college professors that teach. Uh, we have uh, competitive, they're involved in competitive sports. Uh, we have actresses. And now we finally have deaf interpreters and deaf reporters. And where are they? They're in Washington, D.C. So kudos to them. They're very successful. So now here, uh, well, now in New Mexico, uh, just recently, um, to let you know, you know, the, uh, uh, we have the coronavirus, you know, and that's the sign, the coronavirus. I'm not sure if you know the sign for coronavirus. It's awful. And, you know, our governor, whose name is Michelle uh, Grisham, is really good. Uh, she uh, made sure that when they were having coronavirus uh, discussions and press conferences, they made sure that there was a deaf interpreter. And so my friend was so excited. We have finally a deaf interpreter with the governor. And you know, and how, how does that work with the deaf people because they can't hear? Well, they have another hearing interpreter who sits in front of them in a chair um, with all the reporters. And so with that person, when the governor is speaking, they're looking at the governor and they speak and they sign and then the deaf interpreter copies what the what the hearing interpreter is saying they translated and so my friends are like wow this is so cool we finally have a, a deaf interpreter and now there's more and more new deaf interpreters all over and it's just so exciting finally so um you know because uh, because uh, we have a hearing interpreter and a deaf interpreter um you know, so they team and they work together and they, they work together in unison. So sometimes the hearing interpreter uh, doesn't really understand. So they feed um, what the deaf person is saying and then they feed it um, so to the other people when they're speaking. So they sign um, the deaf and then it goes back and forth and it works really wonderful. And it's about time because back then we had interpreters um, and teachers at my time. And uh, so it was just the interpreters were, were our teachers. So for the deaf, uh, one second. Ah, okay. So, you know, it's what's really interesting is to compare deaf culture and hearing culture. So we'll compare the two. With the deaf culture, they tend to be very blunt. 
And here in culture, they tend to sugarcoat everything and they not really telling the truth. And what I mean by that is with deaf people, deaf will say, wow, you're fat. Why? What happened? And they said, oh, I just eat a lot. And they say, oh, okay. But with uh, the hearing people say, oh, you're pretty, you know, but uh, they don't say you're fat. They'll say they'll sugarcoat it and they are not telling the truth. And deaf culture, they're very blunt. And you would not think that that's very nice, but that's deaf culture. We tend to do that. So another example is with hearing, they're like, oh, look at that person. And no, you can't do that in hearing culture. You know, if you're speaking about somebody, you hide it and you use your eyes to point to the person. Instead of in deaf culture, you just actively point to the person. And in deaf people, you say, hey, you see that woman over there? And no, there's fine. It's, it's nothing rude and that's the deaf way. That's how we do things in the deaf culture. So we went far and far and far and they're like, oh, you see the colors and the oranges and the yellows and, and hearing people are, are more polite. They're like, shh, keep it down, keep it down. Just don't do that. And with the hearing people, we tend to have, um, you know, when we're going to the grocery market, you raise up your chin, you know, when you're pointing to somebody. And, uh, you know, so you, you point your chin and that's like, hi, how are you? That type of thing. And, you know, and so that's how you acknowledge people is, is by the nod of, of your chin. Instead, deaf people are like, hi, how are you? Oh, it's so great to see you and so forth. And it's really interesting. Oh, we're switching interpreters. And I'm going to change the page one second. All right, let me get this. So the reason why I share this is like, what my what's my goal really? Experiencing all this, I wanted to be a bridge between the hearing community and the deaf community. I wanted us to meet in the middle and come together. I wanted to connect the deaf and hearing communities. And so I became a teacher. I taught hearing people. And, you know, I was just so sick of going um, home with my own family and having to suffer through speaking and everything. And now my parents are gone. And I know that I need to teach uh, more hearing people how to sign. Anyway. So I want to briefly mention about Martha's Vineyard. I'm not sure if you're aware of it. It's um, over in Massachusetts. It's an island on the East Coast. And it had communities of hearing and deaf people on that island in the 1700s where everyone lived together and everyone learned American Sign Language. And they would have town halls and meetings they go have church services. You'd go to the grocery store and everyone would know how to sign. You'd be able to chat with anyone and ask how they're doing and interact with anyone. Um, and in schools, it wouldn't matter who was deaf or hearing, everyone knew sign language. And, and that was in the 1700s. And I'm just blown away by that. I love that idea. And I want the same idea to apply to today, eventually. I want to help the deaf community and the hearing community come together and provide that service. I don't want to prevent hearing people from being involved. We need to educate people in stopping from, in stopping them oppressing us. We have to learn how to educate others. And I want what happened in the 1700s to apply today. And I'm sure many of the deaf people that may be watching this may feel the same way. And you know, deaf people and hearing people have different cultures, different languages, different practices in the way we use language. Um, hearing people aren't very familiar with body language. Deaf people are very in tune with their body language. Um, hearing people 
are somewhat expressive on the face. Deaf people are much more so. You see every expression, every emotion impact on the way they communicate. It's all there on the face. Um, hearing people don't really know about American Sign Language as a language. Um, they think that, you know, they're just writing and everything. And deaf people, on the other hand, we have American Sign Language and we know American Sign Language has a grammar. And we think in 3D and it's a very visual spatial language. Hearing people show this through their intonation. It goes up and down and you see the same thing kind of parallel with deaf people. They're much more expressive. They sign bigger or they sign smaller and you see that parallel. I'm not sure if you're familiar with um, a man by the name of William Stokey. This is his name sign. Um, he was um, around in the 1960s doing work and he invented the first golden key really for our community. And that was by describing ASL linguistics. And so I'll share with you a little bit about what he found and what he talks about and how we as deaf people growing up, we kind of had this intuition and we communicate with each other um, naturally, but we didn't know previously that there was an, a grammar and a deeper structure to the language. So that's what William Stokey contributed. Hold on one second. Trying to move along a little bit fast, hold on. So Stokey, like I said, um, establish what are what we refer to as the ASL parameters or the parameters of American Sign Language. And those are, um, first, there's hand shape. Um, for example, if I sign me with my one finger like this to my chest, and if I change that, so that's me, I just use that one hand shape. And if I change it to an open palm and tap my chest in the same place, it's my. So it's me and my, that's an example of the difference in hand shape there. So again, me and my. Um, the other, per, another parameter is palm orientation. And as an example, so just um, whether the palm is up or down. And as an example, we have the sign for table like this. And if you flip your hand that way, I mean, it looks wrong. It's, it's not a word. You have to have it flat down to make it the word table. And then, oh, everything's flying. The other one is location. Hold on. Sorry, it's so windy. So location is the third parameter. And that's, uh, let me go. So if I sign C, as in I see you, and if I move it to the middle and sign C, most deaf people, if they're in conversation, will use it from the middle. Um, but the, it's just a difference in location. For movement, this is a sign for enjoy. The hands are moving in circles on the chest. And then if you move them up, you sign happy. The word for happy. The fifth parameter um, are called non-manual signals. So it's, um, if I sign not yet, it's what I'm doing with my face. If I sign late, my mouth, my mouth changed. Have you finished your work? Not yet. And so did you notice that little subtle um, change there? Stokey found these parameters. And so um, we also have differences in present tense versus past tense um, grammatically. Um, so first one, you would say, I'm learning ASL. And then if you change it to past tense, I learned ASL and you would add that sign for finish to give you the past tense. Um, I have a motorcycle. Past tense, I had a motorcycle. Again, using that finish sign. Um, at another example, at nine, I'm going to school. Past tense, I would say at nine, 
I finish, go to school. Always using that finish word for to establish past tense. So current present tense, I live in California, past tense, before I lived in California. And so that's um, just, that's what Stokey identified and saw what was being used. And then we have differences in how you produce nouns and verbs. Noun, chair, for example, and then the verb for sit is just one movement. So again, a noun, you have this double movement with airplane, verb, if you just move it in one motion, it means to fly. And if uh, now the noun scissors and the verb to cut is to just add a single motion. So for the noun, we have telephone, that double tap on the side of the face and verb, you move it toward me to call me and I move it toward you to call you. For as a noun, we have car and then the verb to drive. See that movement moving it forward. And we also have rules with our numbers. Like for example, um, if we're talking about age, we come at the chin and we say one, two years old, three years old, four years old, to six years old, seven years old, eight years old, nine years old. But when you go to nine, you tap it with the finger and then go to 10. Once you hit 10, there's no real rule on how you have to fight age. And then you have um, rules of time, oh, um, the o'clock rules, one o'clock, two o'clock, uh, three o'clock, five o'clock, eight o'clock, always tapping the wrist here. Um, do we have a rule for 10? No, of course not. It's just one through nine. We have that. Um, we just have those rules that seem to just cut off at the number at number nine. And how we know that is from Stokey studies. We also have the same similar rules for minutes, five minutes, six minutes, nine minutes, 10 minutes. You can't do. You can't have 10 on your finger. It's 10 and then you sign the word minute. Uh, let me see. Oh, I'm almost finished. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. All right. We have signs for hour, five hours, six hours, eight hours, nine hours. Uh, should we have 10 hours based on what we've seen? No, we have 10 and then hours. Weeks, um, you, can do, you can do this um, incorporation with uh, two weeks, eight weeks, nine weeks. Can you do that with 10 weeks? No, it, the rule applies to only having handshakes one through nine. Um, you have to do a separate word, 10 and then week, if you want to say 10 weeks. For months, you can say two months, you could say four months, six months, eight months, nine months. But do you think we can do 10 months? No, not like that, no. Weeks, oh wait, no, I mean either. So now for money with dollars and cents, um, you can do $1 with this turn of the wrist, $5, $8, $9, and ten dollars do you think no you have to separate them again ten and then dollars fifteen and then dollar twenty and then dollar okay So we have WH, um, that is to say WH questions, um, like what or where, um, when, who, why, uh, let's see, how, those are all WH questions. So we would say your name, what? You live where? Who are you?
And then we also have question markers um, for WH questions. Your eyebrows tend to go down and express it that way. And we have a question mark for a yes or no, and that's with the eyebrows up. You can add this little question mark hand shape or point, but the eyebrows are up. And then do you enjoy work with the eyebrows up? And then someone will answer, yes, I do enjoy working. And then I would say with my eyebrows up, do you see that woman over there? And then the person might respond, no, I don't see that woman. But these are examples with the eyebrows. Are you he a hearing person? The answer was like, and an answer could be no, I am deaf. Always with the eyebrows moving. And that brings us to kind of topic comment structures, topic and comment. Deaf people typically use this all the time. If you would say party with the eyebrows up, signifying the topic, you would come in and say, it's Saturday, meaning that the party is happening on Saturday. Or if you wanna do a movie, you would say movie Wednesday night. And you could do that as a question, having your eyebrows up the whole way, movie Wednesday night, and then someone could say yes. And then if we go to a bas if we do a basketball game, for as an example of a topic comment, we would say basketball game, and then comments say won, as in we won that basketball game. It's that topic comment structure that is frequently used by deaf people. I know that it's a lot, but it's really important that um, we all learn this and that you've learned this. We also have what are called classifiers. And it's really interesting. Um, they're called CL for, for short um, when we sign in ASL. Um, so if we use CLB, for example, the B handshake, this is the word for walk or room. These are all with the classifier handshape of B to depict the walking of the feet and the walls of the room. Okay, room. We also have it for door, for boat. These are all classifiers. And deaf people just know them and know how to use them. We also have a classifier one handshake. We would point and see the woman over there walked quickly over there. And that one handshake showed the person walking. That's what that um, one handshake is doing just means you walk fast across the space. You would say maybe the man over there kind of teetered his way over into the office, just kind of slowly walked and wandered, meandered. Or if a person was walking by and fell. And then we have a classifier for a three, but like, what could you possibly use for a three with a three handshake? You could say three people walked up to you. It's kind of cool. The three can also sign, uh, show a motorcycle going down the road on a bumpy road. And if there are two cars side by side racing each other, you can show that with both hands, both showing that three, um, that classifier three handshake. Classifiers are really interesting. They're really cool. And then we have CLV. And you say, I like going to the store to look around at what I'm doing. And that's what that V comes in. It's showing me uh, move my eyes up and down perusing the choices. Or I like to keep a close eye and watch. Watch for people who might steal my money. And it's all there in the facial expression too. And you have two sets of eyes. You're so diligent. And that man over there, he's just staring at me. And as soon as I look the other way, he looks away. And then I'm back to normal. I keep, uh, I'm looking 
straight ahead again. I can feel him looking at me, looking at me. It's those two kind of orientations of the way the eyes kind of move up and down. So we have a continuum of different sign language, um, expressions of sign language. Um, some hearing people um, created them, but some deaf people use them and like them, and that's fine. Um, but ASL is short for American Sign Language. There's another one on this continuum called Pigeon Signed English, PSE. And then we have Signed Exact English, S-E-E -E or C sign. So I'll show you some examples of some ASL um, topic comment structure. Store, I go. I'm going to the store. PSE would say, I go to store. More in English structure. The third one, sign, signed exact English would say, I have a sign for each. I am going to the store showing each little piece of that with your hands. So I'm curious what you would think would be the best ASL, PSD, or C sign. Let me know in the little chat. What do you think? I'm curious. Um, but more and more now, we have CODAs who, and CODA is short for a C as in child of, deaf adults, CODA. This usually refers to someone who is hearing who learned ASL from their deaf parent or parent. We also have SODA, which is a sibling, brother and sister of a deaf adult. So if um, you have a brother who is deaf, a sister who is deaf, learning sign language from them, possibly becoming an interpreter, we have CODA and SODA interpreters. Okay, let me see here. So today, more and more and more, um, we have deaf interpreters. We're starting to gain some ground in that, and that's great. Deaf, can, deaf people can succeed in this way, and I am thrilled. You can be an interpreter if you want to help deaf people and interpret for hearing people, like you can do that. You can show what deaf, being deaf means. If you as a deaf person go to an appointment and you're not understanding what the hearing interpreter is signing, you can call and request for a deaf interpreter to come and clarify that and help uh, mediate the conversation better. And then, There's also what we call Turtle Island Hand Talk. I encourage you more and more to start spreading that. We need native interpreters. We need Indian interpreters now more than ever. We have, we are open, we need them. There are plenty of natives who want to become interpreters, but RID won't support it because you have to follow the white way and they face these barriers often. And there's a woman, Melanie McCody, who has been working to encourage Indian interpreters involvement as well as deaf Indian interpreters. And it's thrilling, it's so exciting to see that. Trying to push out RID's strict rules and guidance of recognizing the rights of people who grew up on reservations who want to help deaf Indians serve and serve them better because there's that camaraderie, that, that similar identity that's different from the white world that is run, that RID helps run and perpetuate and critique. We need to educate and help them learn and understand. So keep that in mind. Hold on, let me find my place. We are working to set up a Native American interpreter curriculum now. 
plus tenants for those interpreters who work on reservations inland and learn how you see me kind of signing switching into PSC if you notice. Um, ASL and English. Well, let me tell you. ASL is nothing new. It has been around for ages. There have always been deaf people who communicated with each other. But just about 100 years ago, deaf people have started to fight back for their rights to language, for their rights to express themselves, to protect their language. And I have experienced a lot, and there's been a lot of experience of hearing people oppressing and discriminating against the deaf people. And it, it, there's been enough. We need them to understand. And now we have to teach hearing people how to learn about deaf people's language, American Sign Language. Right now, hearing people have no idea. But there's no, so they have these excuses of ignorance and it's our time to teach them and build better community services for the future here in the USA. We need to help them learn ASL. The same way people learn ASL, learn French, learn Spanish and other languages. Like what's wrong with that? Like this is America. The people are here who use these languages. So my goal is that I believe we, we can be better. And so now I want to practice a little bit with some expressions. So I want you to practice with your eyebrow movement. Your name, what? My name, and then you spell your name. You say, nice to meet you. See you later. Take care. Bye-bye. Come on, practice. Uh, you, want, you want to learn and want to practice? So your name, what? With your eyebrows, I want to see the eyebrows showing the WH question. Nice to meet you. See you later. Deaf people typically use them this much faster and it kind of comes off as see you later, see you later. It's very quick that movement, that change. Take care. Bye bye. So one more and then we'll, we'll be done. So I've been teaching for 30 years. I've been teaching ASL for 30 years. And I know how to voice for myself, but I, I don't want to, I don't like to. I, I love it, I love ASL. And I want hearing people to learn how to communicate and sign and socialize with deaf people for the future. So, I mean, if you wanna, my voice kind of sounds like a cartoon, like, uh, cartoon character, the way it modulates up and down, and uh, I'm not gonna do that. It's kind of, kind of like Tweety Bird, I guess. Uh, just kind of singing and no, no, no. And I don't know if you remember going to um, Gallaudet College. I don't know, before it was a university, it was still called Gallaudet College in Washington, DC. Um, my friends would say, you sound like Tweety Bird. And I, I had no idea. I had no idea what I sounded like. You know, I just look at the mouth, but you know, hearing people, they have this stereo system where they're actually understanding. I'm just looking at the mouth and I was just like, really? I sound like Tweety? And you know, I can, you know, and, you know, kind of like Sylvester trying to, it just made me think of Sylvester trying to get Tweety. But I want communication between the deaf world and deaf culture with hearing, with the hearing world. I want it to be like people were in the past, in the 1700s in Martha's Vineyard. I want that success. So I teach at Santa Fe, I taught at Santa Fe Community College, SFCC for 25 years. I taught at the deaf school as a staff, I was learning sign. Um, I teach staff who are learning sign at the deaf school. I also work for a private school Santa Fe Prep, 
for two years. And I, I, I love teaching. Those kids are so motivated to learn and I see them excel so well. Um, and they love the classifiers and their facial expressions and they really go at it with, um, you know, racing cars and the way they make them turn and they really show it. Um, and they just take off with it. And um, I just see more and more kids like, you know, learning or seeing them learn the language. And I used to work um, teaching waiters how to sign at different restaurants. And, and so many times the waiters would learn how to say, do you want red or green chili? And this is a New Mexico sign for um, chili. And so that people would respond, I want green chili. I want Christmas chili. And so just having, um, teaching these people going, who are going into restaurants and working and that's community. That's the service we need to help, help bridge the communities together. Now I am a private tutor through Zoom. I mean, the way I'm, interacting with you all now. I'm a private tutor as well, and I really enjoy that. Um, it keeps me busy. And sometimes I can communicate just fine through Facebook with people, through both Facebook and Zoom as a tutor. I can use Google Duo or FaceTime. Um, and there are many different opportunities that people, that hearing people can take advantage of and to interact with me or with other deaf people, deaf tutors. So if there's any questions, uh, let me know in the chat here. Thank you so much for watching me. And um, I can give you my email address. Um, it's tv def, D E A F, 77 at gmail.com. My texting um, number, if you feel if you feel like texting, is 505-795. 6804. I'll see you later. You take care. Bye bye. And Elena is saying, Thank you. Thank you, Terry. It was wonderful having you. Thank you. And thank you for teaching all those signs. We love you. Hey, thank you so much, Terry. We're going to, and if you need ASL interpreting services, we have two incredible interpreters down below, or now we've got Kat. So if you want to pin your uh, video screen on that. In the meantime, I'm going to encourage everyone to come in. While you're coming in, we're going to come back and speak to Terry, but I'll go through a commercial break at the same time. What's going to happen is Tash is going to go through um, and invite you in if your camera is jammed. Um, so if you on the side, you'll see a uh, cat on the screen, but just wanted to share about indigenous virtual events. We have one zoom link, which is this number that you're in now. We have had the wonderful wisdom shared by this incredible Terry Vincent teaching a little bit about deaf history, the native uh, AS or native uh, deaf um, and a little bit of teaching with sign language, which was very, very powerful. So and then on Fridays, we have the concert series. This Friday, we've got the beautiful Chris Matthews, who will be blessing us six o'clock, same address. As Tash said earlier, all our events have ASL interpreters. Uh, so ex exclusivity for all. And then believe it or not, next week, it's the beginning of June, who would have thought? Which means we've got a whole new awesome amount of artists. And so gracing us and coming back to the Wisdom Circle, because he's a motivational speaker. We had him in uh, the first with uh, the concert series. Anyway, he'll be back next Wednesday, Ernie Sosi, and uh, we'll be sharing some wonderful wisdoms on Wednesday next week. And if you go to our website, indigenousways.org, virtual events, you're going to see our brand spanking new uh, events for June. We have this incredible smorgasbord 
presenters for Wednesday Wisdom Circle and also um, musicians and artists who will be here for uh, Friday. So go to the website, download that, book in when you want to be here because we want to see you back here. Um, as you all know, our electronics are here and if you are beaming in um, on social media and you want to get in, go to the website, get the uh, Zoom address and come in so you can share a little bit with uh, Terry. Also, please, if you haven't already liked our Facebook, like all our pages, our YouTube, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. If you don't receive our um, newsletter, be sure to sign up and that's at the bottom of our page. Uh, we've also got a donate button. Uh, all our events, there's no cost. One of the reasons why we're here is because we organize uh, and produce events. And because of uh, our pandemic, our glo global pandemic, we went straight online. So if you haven't seen any of the videos and you're new, go into the virtual ways. There's like 18 videos. So we do twice a week, Wednesday, Friday. All of these are recorded access for everyone, amazing presentations on Wednesday, and then incredible stuff going on on Fridays. Our theme throughout all of this is rising and resilience, because the only way that we can get through this pandemic is together. And so like Terry shared at the beginning of her story of growing up deaf, how oppressive that was with us, the hearing, but look at what she has done, her rising, her resilience. And that's how we get through this together. That's why we created the Indigenous Ways virtual events. So if you are able to donate, we've got a PayPal, Venmo. You can also go to our Indigenous Ways do donate. And then we've had a lot of people that don't like the electronics. And so they've sent us um, checks through the mail, which we're really grateful of. That helps us with our interpreters and also our uh, presenters who come through Friday and Wednesdays. A lot of you know, or if you don't, we just came back from the Navajo Nation, uh, Black Mountain doing a relief run. Uh, that community there, Tasha's grandmother was born up there, so was her mother. Tasha and her beautiful sister, who's on, Michelle Redman, they grew up as little kids with their grandmother in Black Mountain. And we found out that there was no uh, supplies or food going up to them. So two Wednesdays ago, we announced that, and then we took off a week later. Um, these are the pictures from that journey. And we took off a week later with 3000 over $3,000 that you had donated to, um, to feed the 40 families up on the mountain. Um, one of the things that you haven't seen that I want to share with you is this. Good morning, Shiche. I'm calling from Black Mesa community and one of the community members. And I have, we have received food donations that you donated from your sister and you and the friends that you have, people that you know that are donated some food to us. We are very thankful and we are just so amazed about you, you too. I share, share where it's action. It was really a blessing. Thank you so much. In return, the mighty Lord, the almighty Lord will bless you with a lot of good things in health and material. Thank you so much. This is Mrs. Jane Ballou calling from Black Mesa. Your mother was my nanny. I know her. Thank you. So thank you for that. I just wanted to share the deep gratitude of the families uh, of receiving that food simply because they've been missed out by a lot of charities and organizations that have been doing the run. Uh, this community, Black Mountain, feeds three areas, Black Mesa with the chapter house where you saw the pictures and video of, 
uh, Kitsili and also Oak Ridge. That's where the 40 families all reside around that area. Totally remote, no running water, no uh, electricity. Um, and so they've been missed out. So Tash asked, do you want us to come back? Because we planned to come back before winter. And they said, absolutely. So we're going to be doing another run, actually two, uh, the end of June and the beginning of August. So if you would like to donate, um, on our website, there's a beautiful banner up the top. Thank you to Bridget to pay out there in um, Atlanta from RTM uh, team uh, who put a who will go, that donation up there will go straight to them. So far, um, in the few days that we've done this, we've almost got a thousand dollars. So this is where the food is going to. There was also an ask, and for those people living in the New Mexico area. Uh, specific things that they wanted, which is just below that you can see here. But we wanted to share that because we'll be going back. Obviously, at the moment, because we've been up there, uh, it's the second highest COVID uh, place in the state. So we have been uh, quarantining for another week uh, that we'll be here because we've been up there. Uh, but in saying that, I, this would not have been possible without any of your support. So we, to say thank you is just a small amount of words of our deep gratitude for everyone. But now I've spoken a lot and now you're all back, you know, let's all just give it up for the amazing Terry Vincent and her beautiful, powerful presentation of what she had to share with us uh, today. Thank, thank you, you Terry. thank you, thank Yay. you. Okay, everybody, unmute and Hi, come on in. Happy day. I see. Uh, I see Najoni. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Terry's uh, former student. Terry. Uh, wow. And yes, and Hawaii. Hey, Sarah, what's up, Sarah? Yes, Hi. so many people. Hi, I love you, Anita. I love you. So yes, can you see me? Yes, Here Alina, can you see Here me? Hi, and then uh, Harry and uh, so she's using uh, different name signs I'm not familiar with. And now uh, there's oh look 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 there's Sarah. Hi Sarah. Hi. Sarah. Yeah. Big hugs, big hugs. Thank I you. I want to do a plug oh, for Sarah. Sarah's going to be presenting. Oh, next this month. is so great. Thank oh, you. Uh, present oh, so with me. Oh yay! Oh, I can't wait to see to see you next month with your presentation. <laughs> So excited! Yay! 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 So uh, to get so you got my experience, and now I get to get yours. And Sarah's saying yes. You know, I'm really looking forward to that night. And Terry said, "Thank you. It's good to see you." And Sarah said, "Yes, it's good to see you." And Terry said, "Oh, you're looking good. You're looking very good. Yay!" Uh, it seems like there's so many deaf people here. It seems like there's all deaf. This is great. <laughs> this is great. Yeah, uh, yeah and Alina uh, and uh, thank you, thank you. And Christine is saying, "Oh yeah, this is this is great." And Terry saying, "Thank you." Does anybody want to ask Terry any questions? Does anybody want to say something? Joni, would you like to say something for your to your old teacher? Okay. Are you going to turn it off? You can voice Tara uh, Najoni. Sign Najoni. We have dogs barking over here because someone just showed us at the house. So they're all barking. <laughs> Sign language Najoni. Sign language Najoni. Wow. And Does anyone uh, want to hear anything while Terry's here or comments or something that you need to share? Does anybody want to say anything to me? Hello. <laughs> Hello, uh, Sarah, 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 can you see me? Sarah, remember, remember Sarah and, um, and then the A sign. Sorry, I, I don't remember who that is. Uh, with Arletta, Arletta. A. Oh, Arletta, thank you. Um, yeah, remember, uh, she's, um, she's from Arizona. Arletta, yes. Yeah, Arletta. Remember, that's her name sign. 
Yes, and um, so she is, um, she's in Arizona, she's in Southern. Uh, she's deaf and she's a little bit shy, so she won't communicate with us, I guess. Can I meet her at the panel? And let's see. Um, oh, so, yeah, did you get the land? Um, did you go back home to your land? No? No, no. It's uh, with, uh, with Dennis Hong, remember? Um, mm -hmm. When we, we went there with him uh, to to his house with, with Arletta? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. I really can't remember her. Yeah. Hey, guys, I think Arletta is really new to this. Somebody needs to yes. yeah. David? Hi, Arletta. Wow, wow, well, you you look beautiful uh, on the on the mountain. Yeah, yeah. Sarah yeah, speaking. Uh, sorry, I oh I get that. I understand it. <laughs> hey, I want to give a plug because we've got so many wonderful people here. I want to give a plug to Laura or so Richard who's on the line from Ohio. They've got this beautiful. Uh, a deaf think positive it's a rehabilitation center for deaf and blind people to get sober and get creative and learn to do artwork this lady with the gorgeous silver hair that's doing the cool sign like this with her fingers going like this that's at laura she's the one that started the uh, deaf think positive for for the deaf me and elena went there and met a lot of her clients and that was really awesome hey shell and caleb as always nice Yay, to see you caleb, caleb! caleb! Hey, are you still in Santa Fe or have you gone down to uh, Florida? Oh, cool. no, I'm still here. I'm still here. I have books for you, Caleb. <laughs> I have books for you. Let me know. So there's a couple okay, of good. things. It was Jerry's birthday yesterday. Happy birthday, Jerry. Jerry. And also our wonderful sister, Rachel Shalpi. She just finished her semester Woo! first with her master's. So congratulations, uh, Shell. Now you're free. Get in trouble. Free to get in trouble. Hey. But I want to. I do want to say this. But you can see Sarah Young Bear. We're really honoured because at the end of next month, Sarah will be. Um, coming in and presenting. She is an extraordinary beater, a generation. She goes back generations of beating. So she's going to be presenting amazing stuff. So please be sure to come in this time next month, at the end of the month. But as I said, we've got a whole slew of incredible people, including Jerry Barney. Uh, including Sarah. Who else we've got on the line? Um, with the Wisdom Circle as well as the beautiful Jerry Barney. She's going to be the second Wednesday um, of June. And she and a lot of you have been here with her beautiful prayers that she has when we close out in the circle. So very, very grateful. We've got such a slew. So be sure to go on the website or in the chat box. There's all our links and also you can download uh, the calendar for both Wisdom Circle and also for uh, concert series. Hi, Christine. Nice to see you. Christine and yeah. Donna. We got to stay at the house in Ohio. Right on. Thank you so much. And Love being you all. Here. Thank we you. We got a lot of Ohioans. Yeah, a lot of Ohioans. What? Ohioans. Missy, I love you. Missy, you're my hero forever. That's my sister, everybody. <laughs> That's my sister. Guess what? She's a lawyer. She's a Navajo lawyer, everybody. Hey, Aleta, you've been very quiet. Is there anything you want to say? Oh, Aleta's shy. <laughs> She's very shy. Sorry, I can't. I can't see everybody. Uh, and uh, Terry's saying, "Yeah, Arletta, are you there?" Hi. Yes. Oh, and you gave us the, the food. It, it's somebody uh, connecting um, on um, Black Mountain. Uh, you gave us the food for Black Mountain and all the people there, and you bought all the food, and that was wonderful. And Terry saying, yes, uh, yeah, it's great to be able to support, to support everybody, yes. So I'm 
giving everybody pats on the back uh, to Tosh and Elena and everybody. Hey, there's, um, I just saw Cheryl. Cheryl just popped in, Cheryl Stonerock. I don't want to embarrass you or anything, but I just really want to lift you. When Tash and I were in uh, on tour last summer and being in Ohio with Donna and Christine, we had the pleasure of also meeting the beautiful Laura who brought us into Deaf Think Positive. One of her extraordinary, uh, I don't know, clientele people that were there was Cheryl uh, Stonerock and her husband. And I'm saying this because we were just so deeply moved by the artwork. So we were sitting there and they shared their artwork with us. And I've got to say, Chris, Cheryl's artwork was just phenomenal. Very, very powerful. And with her story, we, I was, we were both so deeply moved and so deeply touched in a place where she connected to, to bring that out in a healing sense through her art. So Cheryl, thank you. What a joy when we came on to see your beautiful face here being with us. And, uh, oh, sorry, your boyfriend. So thank you. Thank you both, you and your partner. Just a joy to see you both. Thank you. Take care, Martin. Go ahead and sign off, Martin. We love you. Thank you for a good job. Let's give it up for Martin and Kat, everybody. Great Our interpreters. amazing interpreters and making amazing access available. Yes. Thank you to all those on Facebook. Does anyone else want to say anything before we wrap up? I'm going to eat now, everybody. Love you. Bye. <laughs> anyone want to say anything? Jerry, do you want to close us out with something, one of your powerful uh finishings thank you everyone so much jerry's just gonna uh unmute herself this is what we do every wednesday thank you for connecting with us we want you to stay safe that was the reason for us doing these uh virtual events um and that whole social distancing is really important i know we're in summer that the only cure that's going to happen is when there's an antidote and right now there's not and so we've got to take precautions in what we do. And you know how we can do this? Together. You know, we grow strong by being together. So we want to thank each and every one of you for beaming in this evening. Um, thank you for the things that you do to be safe because we want to see you back here next Friday with Christine Matthews, Chris Matthews, or back at the um, Sacred Circle with a comedian, motivational speaker, um, Ernie Sosi. So, Jerry. Hi. Hello. Yeah. Salut. Salut. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Um, yeah. A. Uh, Geraldine Varney in Um Hello, everyone. My name is Geraldine Varney. Yat A, Yat A, Yat A. Um, hope life is well with you. And a Hiha TV for your um, information you. and education and um, your thoughts of moving forward to be inclusive, to be inclusive with um, expression, inclusive with what is coming from the heart that comes out facially, emotionally. And I can really see the difference um, that occurs and the language that is through the muscles of the face and the gestures and the posturing. Yeah. Um, I um, am a dear friend or my dear friend Tosh. Um, I never really um, came across until I had met her um, signing. Um, and it's, it's, uh, it's, it seems like, well, to me, it seems like it's more. It's more than what I can offer. 
audibly, uh, visually, you know, and hearing, it seems like there is a lot more there and something I am missing. <laughs> and I would like to learn and to know more as well. So, uh, yeah, um, yes, that, that is as well. Thank you. Um, Yat a great spirit um, um, creator, um, bless us all today to come together and to understand that there is a visual language that um, is needed and is needs to grow, just like the different languages of of the the Kolitz people, the tribe. Uh, the different tribes, the different Pueblo tribes, the Navajo, the Zuni Pueblo, uh, Laguna, um, Wampanoag, and to be cross-cultural and to learn. There's a whole lot more to learn. And we're, I'm very grateful. Yeah, thank you for today. Thank you for everyone who is here. Um, together, inclusively, um, bless your heart, um, bless your minds, take care of yourself. For everybody, Thank that, you. that is the, uh, the essence of the Navajo prayer is the beauty way it is. We say it four times. We say it four times and it means the beauty way it is, so it is. So thank you, Jerry Barney. We love you, Terry Vincent, and everybody that's on tonight. We love, love, love you. No. We so appreciate our ASL interpreters. And Missy, you are a rock star. That's my sister. You go. <laughs> um, Sarah Young Bear, me and you, we need to talk. Let's talk soon, okay, Sarah? Arletta, we're going to take... Oh, Arletta, do you want to talk? Okay. Sorry, I, I can't see who's speaking. Okay, sorry. Okay, sorry. Arletta, we'll, we'll talk later, okay? I'll, I'll contact Demetrius and we'll, I'll talk to you. I'll call you in about an hour, Arletta. The meeting, the, the event's over now, Arletta. Oh, uh, Geraldine. The woman's name is is Jerry. Yeah. Jerry. Yeah. Um. And you you did the prayer. Um. In your language, and you blessed uh, the uh, the education and the language, um, in the meeting, and the name um, is Sarah Young Bear. So you, Sarah Young Bear. Uh, do you see her there? You yes. see her there. There's uh, many deaf people. You see all the different names. Do you see Sarah Young Bear? Uh, there's, I can't see who's speaking now. It's in the, the top corner. Um, it's in the top corner. Can you make our letter bigger so I can see what she's saying? No, I can't. Oh, okay. Can the video? Sorry, I'm. Uh, I've got. I'm trying to, to get everybody speaking and I can't see them. I'm sorry. Okay, Arletta, I want to have to call you later. Okay, Arletta? Yeah, we can see you, Arletta. Yeah, I can, I can see you, Arletta. Yes, good, good. And TV is saying, yeah, I can, I can see you. Yes, 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 clearly, clearly. <laughs> Clearly. Uh, Terry, Terry, Arletta's glasses broke and she can't see right now and she can't get to the Indian hospital. She's quarantined in Albuquerque off the reservation. She can't go home right now because she's got, you know, it's that Navajo Nation COVID situation. So Arletta's stuck in Albuquerque, can't get to a hospital, can't get glasses. She can barely see this. So that's what's going on with Arletta. She's walking off now. Okay, everybody, we love you. We love you. Stay safe. We'll look forward to seeing you on Friday for Chris Matthews. Thank you. Let's give it up for Terry. Yay. Yay. Love you, everybody.